Federal officials are warning that China is working to interfere in November's election. Last month, Meta, the parent company of Facebook, took down what's described as the first targeted Chinese campaign to interfere in the nation's politics. But there are still concerns that Beijing could influence some closely contested races. For more, I want to bring in Rachel Levy. She's the director of geopolitical risk at Active Fence, a technology security company. We hear so much about Russia, but what makes China different in these information operations? Sure. Hi, Catherine. Um, so China really um, engages in many different types of malign influence campaigns. Um, they range from um, decentralized and centralized botnets um, that consist of you know, thousands of entities and fake accounts um, that uh, usually don't have a ton of interaction and engagement, um, all the way to very targeted operations, um, operations that are uh, run uh, specifically looking to influence a specific target audience um, that's usually focused more on quality than quantity. Um, we've also seen a lot of campaigns that are engaged in uh, we call active measures, so things that um, coordinated efforts to uh, brigade, so that's uh, harassing um, and getting removal, um, doxing and hacking campaigns um, that are targeting dissidents, um, oppositionists, and related uh, activists and their, all their activities. Um, and this is really something that's uh, not uh, perceived um, on the same par as Russia, but China is actually very active um, in this space, and they're engaged in uh, sophisticated sophisticated and complex campaigns. Right. Okay. So to break it down simply, is China more interested in targeting specific candidates who may be promoting policies that are against their interests, or are they more interested in undermining our democratic institutions? Sure. Um, so the content that we've been seeing related to uh, their activities in relation uh, to the U.S. midterms um, hasn't really been focused on specific candidates um, or specific elections. Um, they've been more focused on kind of demoralizing the voter um, and really trying to polarize um, and sow discord, um, which is actually something that we saw uh, very much affiliated with Russia um, in the past. But this is new activity uh, for China. Um, and these are kind of focusing on things like the Democratic democratic nature of the elections, um, suggesting that the uh, United States is on the brink of civil war, um, that the U.S. is divided and chaotic, um, divided among racial lines, um, and that uh, essentially the two-party system is a joke. Um, they're also focusing on a lot of issues that are very important in the midterms, um, things like inflation and the economy, um, and really zeroing in on those hot-button to topics to basically um, denigrate the United States and demoralize the voter. Based on my reporting, there is a split among uh, some current and former intelligence officials about how active China was in the last election cycle, and, and some are arguing that this time around they feel more emboldened. What are your thoughts? Sure. So we know, um, at least from the National Security Council, um, that there is the assessment that uh, there was, at the very least, uh, voter registration data that was being um, utilized to try to carry out these malign influence campaigns in the 2020 election. Um, but they've definitely grown more emboldened. Um, I think that's been evident um, in a lot of the headlines in recent days. Um, also, we've seen things uh, related to um, harassment to particular candidates that uh, have uh, specific stances on China. Um, but uh, this is definitely a, a shift, uh, a paradigm shift in their activity. Um, this is not something we've seen in the past. Um, so it's an indicator that they're taking more interest in this type of activity, um, and it's a concerning one. It's less than two weeks from the election. What are the red flags that voters ought to be looking for to, to know when they're seeing an influence operation? Sure. Um, I think people should always be skeptical and uh, come with a nuanced eye to the information that they're consuming. Um, and I think it's such a broad problem um, that's plaguing society um, that we always need to be asking ourselves the question, where did this um, information originate from? Who's sharing it? Um, where and how am I consuming it? Um, and people really need to kind of focus on trusted news sources. Um, there's so much misinformation and so much disinformation that's floating around. Um, and it's by design um, created to try and blend in and try to be um, deceptive. Um, so it's really important that people have kind of their trusted sources of information and rely on those uh, for 
you know, what they read and what they ingest um, and the information they take in. Former intelligence official said to me to always be on the lookout for anything that makes you feel real uh, emotional. He said that's often a telltale sign. Rachel, Le Rachel Levy, thank you. No problem. Thank you. It's a pleasure.